Okay, I'm gonna begin. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, I think we're streaming, perfect. Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I see um, Elizabeth, you're back already and I'm really excited to hear Elizabeth, a lot of your questions as well. Um, I know I've been speaking about our next guest for the past two days and we're really, really excited to have Gregory Sampson from the T4SD platform. Um, I think you, I think by now we all know that we need to be <laughs> sustainable and we need to be transparent in our su supply chain and really building trust, right? That's been the key theme for the past, you know, every session, everyone is saying the same type of information in different ways. And we're really, really lucky again to have Gregory here to show us this platform and kind of show us what's really happening in the industry right now in the traceability side with these different um, wonderful platforms and this amazing platform from ITC. I'm going to turn it right over to you, Greg, um, and I'm just gonna, the floor is yours. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Tara, for the introduction. I'm really delighted to be here and have the, the opportunity to present to you um, the sustainability map which is a, a platform which was uh, launched at the International Trade Center over four years ago. And I'm sharing my screen right now, and you can actually see the, the homepage of the sustainability map. So it is an online tool whose mission is really to build transparency for a sustainable future. So this platform is uh, accessible via sustainabilitymap.org. And once you arrive on the, on the land, landing page, on the home page, it will be a, a bit of a presentation of the main uh, beneficiaries, target users. So they're essentially uh, micro, small and medium sized enterprises that want to highlight their strengths and sustainability credentials to access markets and preferential credits. As Tara mentioned, you know, now, one really needs to be sustainable, but beyond this, there are also brands which require supply chains to be more and more transparent, which means that they have a certain responsibility towards governments and consumers to actually showcase where products which they sell retail actually come from. As part of the platform, as we'll see in just a few minutes, we work with small, medium-sized enterprises, brands such as uh, Lacoste, uh, Carrefour, uh, just, just to name a, a few, that actually take part in the platform and that actually want to engage with beneficiaries such as yourself to actually source products which are sustainable and to actually uh, engage with you as a way to make the supply chain transparent. And we also work a lot with what we call sustainability enablers. And for lack of a better word, sustainability enablers are also called voluntary sustainability standards. So these standards, these certifications, which can be added to your products in order to showcase that, yes, indeed, the products that I'm showcasing are organic or they comply to specific social norms. And we also work a lot on these uh, with these initiatives on the, on the sustainability uh, map. But not to say that you need to be certified by any of these initiatives to be uh, featured on the platform because with a She Trades Accelerator program, you will have the opportunity to be on the platform and to be invited. You'll also see, and I'll discuss this in, in, in a little bit, you know, we are really using uh, excellent platform uh, technology to showcase uh, what, is, what is happening. So maybe what I am going to do now is before doing a, an actual presentation of the sustainability map, of its features and how you can engage with the platform, I'm just gonna show a, a 90 second video just to give you an overview of um, the platform. And I will go into much more details about each and every feature of this video over the course of the presentation, which I think will be about 40 minutes and then we'll have uh, some time for the Q&A. So here goes the, the actual teaser video.
okay, great. So that was really a 90 second rundown of um, the sustainability map platform. And what I'm going to do now is really uh, walk Pleasure you through to be here uh, with you online today for this uh, for this webinar. So uh, just uh, before we yeah, there we go. Sorry, it seems YouTube wanted to, to play another video. Great. So I'm going to walk you through um, the sustainability map and really go through um, four steps, right? So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the platform so that you as companies, businesses know what you would be um, engaging with, you know, and, and, and um, getting on to. Then secondly, we're going to look at the features of this platform. So as part of the She Trades Accelerator program, you know, how you will be able to, to benefit from it and what are the features made available by the platform? What is going to be the journey? So right now we're um, doing this webinar together, but what will be the next steps for you to really engage uh, on the sustainability map? And then last but not least, just give you a quick overview of the existing engagements that we have uh, on the platform. So, Sustainability map is accessible for free. It's part of the United Nations public goods, uh, which means that it is free now and it is going to remain uh, free for an indefinite amount of time. And really what we're trying to do is to enable businesses to promote the sustainable practices uh, to gain some visibility, so some of you may already have some great material which you're sharing on Facebook, on Instagram, on your own websites, you know, but what you can do actually is um, reuse some of this information which you may already have, or even as part of PDF documents flies, and put them on an online platform, which is the sustainability map, so that you gain visibility towards um, international buyers that come to the platform and actually want to source sustainable products and which are already using the platform to showcase the transparency of their um, supply chain. Now, we aim to be the world's largest network of um, sustainable businesses. So right now we've got about 57,000 sustainable businesses which are listed on the platform. So what does that mean? It means that we've got over 50, 7,000 accounts of companies that appear on the platform. And I'll show you what the appear actually means, you know, and that have actual uh, profiles. We're working with 54 leading international brands, and those are mostly in um, textile, garment, and retail sector. So I did mention uh, Lacoste, um, Carrefour, uh, Monoprix, uh, a, a lot of these um, big brands that operate also a lot in the, in the European market. And then we're working with uh, various um, sustainability enablers, which include a global organic textile standard, a textile exchange, um, Ercotex, to also uh, feature certified businesses on uh, the platform. So in terms of the actual um, features, we aim to really use um, cutting edge technologies in, in data solutions. And one thing that is really important for us is to build on the, on the visibility and to give you means to actually gain visibility towards potential buyers, to also uh, enable those buyers to improve the transparency of their uh, global value chain and to also showcase to their consumers that they are um, sourcing from uh, producers that want to have um, sustainable production and processing uh, uh, ways of, of operating. And here is a testimonial from uh, a tea producer in Nepal, you know, that actually managed to get some visibility by featuring on uh, the platform. While on the platform, some international buyers that were looking for um, Nepalese tea came to the platform, saw the profile of this producer and engaged in um, business uh, activities with them. One thing that's really important to mention is that um, sustainability map is not an e-commerce platform. So there are no transactions, retail sales transactions that happen 
on the platform. There's no credit card, there's none of the kind. What we really try to do is do matching, matching of sustainable producers with um, sustainable buyers. So to tell you a little bit about um, the story of this uh, Nepali uh, tea producer, we actually managed to connect this tea producer with a buyer in uh, the United States. And what this buyer in the United States has done is that on the tea products that this tea buyer is selling in its shop, there is a small QR code. The QR code are those kind of black and white you know, diagrams which you can see on products and consumers can actually come with their telephone, QR code uh, the product, and they land on sustainability map. So sustainability map, what I was showing you before was the homepage. But if you click on the explore button at the top of the page, you can actually enter the sustainability map network. And on that network, you have those 57,000 companies, those buyers that are also um, accessing the platform and also information about those sustainability enablers. Now, what you see right now is the profile, the public profile of Stoneleaf Tea House. So this is the buyer that ended up featuring on the platform, but a lot of the buyers that use the platform do not necessarily feature right now. That means that if you go on the platform and you do not see Lacoste, it's because Lacoste is using the platform, but they haven't made themselves public yet. They're using the platform, you know, in private mode, and then they'll be willing to go into public mode. And I'll say this in just a bit, in a few more minutes, because what we'll be very careful about, you know, when um, showcasing your information, your data, is that you're in full control of it. Right, and you own the data, and at any moment in time, you can decide to also leave the platform, you know, for, for any, any, any type of reason. But right now, seeing the profile of Stony Tea House, consumers can actually see okay, so I'm buying from the Stony Tea House, a bit of information about its social media, a bit of information about its address contact details, website, company size, a bit of a description. I can see its geolocation. I can see the type of products um, that it is uh, currently uh, producing. See whether there is um, any certification, which this uh, specific buyer admits to, a bit of media, and I can also see its network. So where does Stony Tea House sources its products from? And this is really what we will aim to do, you know, by featuring your businesses on sustainability maps through the She Trades Accelerator uh, program. And um, right now, being part of the She Trades Accelerator program, you even have uh, the option, you know, when you sign up to actually tick a box and say, yes, I want to feature on a sustainability map, which means that just like Stony Tea House, you could have your own presence on sustainability map. You will also have the possibility to log in, have a username and edit the information, which means you can change the pictures, you can really you know, make this information as attractive as possible to potential buyers. Now, one thing that we are doing with buyers also, and what they are also very much interested in, is that a Stoneleaf Tea House, you can see its network. So on sustainability map, clicking on the networks, you can see where it sources the product from. And it sources it from Himcop, Himalayan Team Producers Cooperative, which is an intermediary in Nepal. And just like Stony Tea House had a profile, they made a connection to Himcop. And you see with this platform, you can actually build interactions like this, linkages within the supply chain. And this is of great interest to consumers because from shops, they can see where the products come from. And you can see that with Himcop, they can see the network, see the geolocalization, and then they can even see from Himcop from which tea garden it actually uh, sourced its, its products from. So the consumer can actually see, okay, so this tea that, I am that I'm buying 
comes from this specific region, this specific tea garden even mapped all of its farmers to really go down to the deepest level of transparency of the supply chain. And some of these producers, not all of them, let's face it, you know, even have accounts on sustainability map and have their own uh, profiles. And here in the current uh, case, uh, this Kachanjunga Organic Orthodox Chia Udoi um, Tea Garden also showcased some of its uh, certificates or sustainability um, efforts. So this is really something um, that we will be working on, uh, you know, while um, leveraging this um, sustainability map platform. Now, one thing also that is extremely important for us, and I didn't mention it, you know, a, a few times, is that we're very much working on neutrality. You know, we're a United Nations project. This is really a global public network of uh, businesses. We want the data to be as trustworthy as possible. And, you know, coming through the She Trades Accelerator program, we have, of course, this, this strong bond uh, with you, you know, and an element of trust, you know, to feature uh, your business on, on the platform. And we have very strong um, data privacy and confidentiality. And this is also one of the reasons why we work with partners um, such as um, Lacoste that are working with us to actually, you know, map their supply chain, the transparency of their supply chain, and to identify new businesses from which it uh, can source its, its products. So this is an example right now of one of the suppliers of uh, Lacoste. So Epsilon that featured on the platform, you can see um, that Epsilon is operating from Madagascar, that it is selling its products to uh, an intermediary in France, which is called um, Gaet. And um, Epsilon, just like the other profiles which I showcased earlier on, has a public view as such on, on sustainability map. And they also have an account where they can modify the information, update it, you know, and ensure that their profile really reflects the reality on the ground. Now, one thing that is also happening behind the scenes is that there are brands such as Lacoste that are working to map, you know, in the shadows, what are the different intermediaries in the supply chain? That is on sustainability map right now, we're showing linkages between Epsilon and Diet, but we're working with partners such as Lacoste to actually enable them to map 100% of their supply chain. And what you see right now is um, the link that we have with other partner uh, projects. In this case, it's the Initiative for Compliance and Sustainability, where we're really working with Lacoste to map down to the tier five of their supply chain, which means that consumers of a polo shirt will be able to really see, you know, where the different garments actually originate from. And we're working very closely with them to even go down to the farm level to see where the cotton, you know, which uh, is being used in a, in a, in a polo shirt actually uh, originates from. So this, what you see right now on the screen, these kind of dots, which are in red, are linkages which have been established and companies which are not yet visible on sustainability map. But we've invited them to come to sustainability map and to be part of this initiative to really help Lacoste to be 100% um, transparent. And we're seeing more and more of those companies in the last few days, you know, actually imper uh, appearing on the platform. And this really enables us to create those linkages and we also have tools to enable Lacoste to build the transparency of its uh, supply chain. Now, one thing which was mentioned over the course of the, of the last few days was the importance of um, transparency and traceability. Now, what is really important is that more and more governments are actually imposing on large brands, retailers um, to um, actually have information about the transparency of the platform, of their supplies. Now, even in France, there's a, 
uh, due diligence laws, you know, and even there is a law that, is, that may be passed you know, at the European level, you know, uh, to enforce um, large buyers to have transparency in the supply chain, which means that suppliers of these brands, you know, such as yourselves in one point or another, you know, in, in global value chain, need to actually be part of that vision to ensure that you can continue selling to brands, you know, internationally. And this is really uh, important and we're helping them to, to have this uh, um, connectivity. Now, there is uh, one question from uh, the audience which uh, has come through. And um, I, I think it's really important to address it now. We'll be addressing, you know, other questions further on uh, in, the, in the presentation, but uh, the question asks whether it's possible for a company that is not yet sustainably certified to be on the sustainability map platform. Yes, it is possible. It is not obligatory to have uh, a certification. You know, we as the International Trade Center, we're not promoting those certifications necessarily, you know, but we are providing information uh, about whether or not the business, you know, complies to such certification. So if you do have, you know, a specific um, sustainability practices in place, you will see that as part of the sustainability map uh, profile, there is space for you to talk about it, to mention it and to showcase the efforts that you are doing, you know, to ensure that you operate in a sustainable way. Now, what we're trying to do as much as possible, you know, with the sustainability map, is to enable you also to tell the story uh, to consumers about the actual um, story behind um, the product. So that's the, the features of um, the sustainability map. Now let's take a look at the, at the actual journey. Now, there are really two different sides of uh, the coin that we can look at when, you know, uh, engaging on the sustainability map platform. So we're working on, on one side with uh, brands and uh, sustainability enablers. And we're also working with uh, businesses um, such as yourselves, right? And we engage with these two different uh, parties in, um, in a different way. So in terms of the businesses um, such as yourselves, we will actually um, send you an invitation. So when you do the sign-up process on the She Trades uh, Accelerator program, there is the sign-up profile page. There is the option to tick, you know, yes, I want to be featured on a sustainability map. If you have uh, ticked that box, um, in the next few weeks or months, you know, we'll have to see with Tara uh, exactly when we send out those invitations, you know, all at once, we will send you an invitation uh, to join the platform. And this invitation will be sent to you by email. Within the email, there will be uh, a link that you will click on. And once you click on that link, you will be taken through a few steps um, to actually uh, review the information which you have uh, already entered and filled in, you know, as part of the She Trades Accelerator program. So we'll ask you to review, is this the correct name of your business? Is this your address? Are those the types of products, you know, that you are producing, processing? Is this your correct um, geolocalization? So this only takes um, a few minutes. But what we're trying to do as part of this is to really double check and ensure that any information that will be featured on a sustainability map will be correct. And then you will be invited after having reviewed this information to create an account. There again, this is free. You'll simply have to enter uh, an email, the password, agree to the terms and conditions, and then click yes. And then your profile will not only be accessible via the sustainability map, but you will also have uh, access to your account where you can manage this information. So you'll be able to upload uh, the logo, an avatar, uh, to provide additional information about your social media, about the products, and you'll be able also, and this is something that we're gonna be working with, you know, to build your own 
network, your own network of suppliers, you know, your own network of intermediaries. There again, to make your business as attractive as possible to potential uh, buyers. On the other hand, what we are also doing is um, building with, uh, working with uh, brands that are um, sharing data with us about their, their supplies, they can preview the network, they can publish the network. So as I mentioned, you know, a lot of uh, buyers right now want to be 100% uh, transparent in their supply chain. So just like Lacoste, they're trying to, to map, you know, uh, the actual supply chain. Um, to invite new supplies as well, you know, based on uh, new business connections, which they may uh, potentially identify via the sustainability map. And we also have uh, some specific features for them to enable them to run some analytics uh, and to ensure that the data that they present on the platform is as updated as possible. So, this is really the type of um, journey um, that uh, we're, we're laying down to really aim to, to tap into the future of, of sustainability and really trying to be as sustainable and transparent as uh, possible. Um, just to give you an idea, um, the project right now has donors, you know, which include the European Commission um, among, among others. And we work with about 54 brands. So just a few listed, Lacoste, Jules, Carrefour, Tapaloy, Camayu, Camayeu, uh, with sustainability enablers, you know, Global Organic Textile, Textile Exchange, World Trade Organization, not to say that if you're not certified uh, by these um, um, sustainability enablers that you cannot be featured on the platform. And also uh, uh, organizations such as the Initiative for Compliance and um, Sustainability. So once again, just to finish the presentation part, you know, we really have strong data privacy and confidentiality because the data that you would be sharing with us, you know, is hosted on United Nations um, servers. We would not commoditize this information. We'd never sell it, you know. The data you provide uh, will remain yours at any moment of time, you know. Uh, being on UN servers, we're immune from governmental law, which means that if governments come to us and say, listen, I want to get all of your information because I want to text, check taxpayers' money or something like this, you know, this is not something uh, which, uh, which they can do. We really try to be uh, as trustworthy as uh, possible. So that's why, you know, through this uh, She Trades Accelerator program, you will have the possibility to join the sustainability map and to reference your uh, company. Uh, we'll make sure that the information is uh, also updated and uh, kept in sync. So maybe now uh, what I can do um, is just do a, an actual tour of uh, the platform to, to show you what it looks like. So before we were uh, exploring the homepage, really to kind of give you a an overview of what it is, what it does, you know, and there again, in your free time, you know, going to sustainabilitymap.org, you can see, you know, what is the solution doing, you know, for uh, businesses um, such as yourselves, you know, and see some testimonials from some of our uh, beneficiaries. So let me um, now jump um, to the actual um, sustainability map uh, tool. And in order to do this, um, you need to uh, click on the explore button um, that's at the top of um, the screen. And by clicking on this um, button, you will um, actually um, uh, get on the main page where you can access and actually become uh, one of these um, businesses that are featured on um, the platform. So the platform is actually organized in two parts. So we really have uh, an interactive uh, map that is um, located here on the right-hand side. Um, each of the dots represents um, at least one business. So here you can see that in specific regions, uh, we have uh, numerous dots. So that means that if I were to go a little bit deeper, you know, I could uh, actually focus on a given region. 
and see where uh, companies are based. Uh, you have the option to filter by type. Um, so you can uh, decide to only see traders, retailers, processes, manufacturers, primary production. So you'll see once you register or receive the invitation, I should say, uh, to join the platform, you will have the possibility to be featured as either kind of primary production. So that's really when you're producing primary products. And also um, whether you're more kind of a processor or, or manufacturer in, in the supply chain. Then uh, anyone accessing the platform has the option to enter uh, the product, which they search in a country, uh, a data source. So as part of the She Trades uh, Accelerator program, you'll be referenced as a uh, She Trades Accelerator program, which means that over time you will see uh, the number of dots is associated, you know, with this data source uh, increase, or you can search by name, which means that even if you are um, doing some potential, um, you know, business deal with uh, a buyer, you can invite them to go to this platform, look for your uh, company name, and they will see it on the map. What you can see also on the bottom left-hand side are um, the profiles of the companies uh, which can be queried on, on the map. So this is really the type of view um, that buyers, you know, anyone kind of accessing the platform um, can see. And when you click on a specific uh, company, so right now I clicked on a Red Cacao Terra, uh, which was a company in Colombia. Um, that produces um, cocoa. You can see that uh, any buyer can uh, directly uh, contact um, this business, uh, have access to their telephone number, go to their web page, see the type of opportunities that they are interested in. So here, this specific company, you know, is looking to identify new traders and buyers, new suppliers, um, potential investment funding. They provided a little brief about their uh, company. They provided also um, their network. So where does this cooperative actually, you know, source its uh, producers, produce, uh, products from, sorry. So here uh, a buyer can also see, you know, okay, so it sources it from uh, different parts uh, from, from South America, the type of uh, products. So you will see that, um, when we talk about products, you can provide a lot of information. So if you do textile and garment, you know, what's the type of quality, grade, description, variety, you know, uh, extra information, the, 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 any uh, countries where you really may uh, sell to, whether you export or not, you know, whether you provide free samples, uh, you can provide some um, media, so some pictures. Uh, we're currently revamping a little bit this part of the, of the website, but we'll tell you more, you know, in the, in the next few months. And as I mentioned, you know, really showcase uh, your type of, of network. Now, this is really the sustainability map platform, what anyone can see from the, out, uh, from the outside. Now, I'm going to give you a look at um, what uh, you will be looking at once you will be receiving the invitation. So once you'll receive the invitation, once you will have uh, created your account, you'll be able to go to sustainabilitymap.org slash login, and you'll be able to really access um, the, your, your own dashboard to edit the information about your company. So you'll be able to put, you know, to edit your company name, assign a role to your company, provide a description, provide information about the contact information, the email, the telephone, the website, all of this information will then be passed on, you know, onto the sustainability map platform, any social media, your company size, the type of opportunities that you are looking for, the size of your network. So how many uh, potential uh, suppliers, intermediaries you're working with, uh, whether the top manager is man, woman, what's your age group? These are kind of questions, you know, that we have uh, to uh, report on as part of the United Nations. Uh, you'll be able to provide information about the products of your company. So just as I was showing you know, early on with Red Cacao Terra, you'll be able to provide all of this data 
about uh, the product name, variety, grade, you know, uh, volumes of production. Um, if you do comply to um, certificates or if you have specific um, sustainability efforts, you know, you'll be able to reference them here. You will even be able to um, geolocate yourself, you know, on a map. So this is something um, which you will do as part of your validation process. You know, the five steps, you will have to drop the pin as such to really try to see where you are uh, located so that when buyers come to the platform, they can see uh, in which region of the world you are. You'll even be able to create um, assets. So what I mean by this is that you'll be able to identify on a, on a map an area where uh, you may be uh, located and you could, uh, this is probably not the best example, but you can even, you know, actually even draw on the map, where is your factory, where it is, where it is located, what is it that you do here, do you own it, do you rent it, um, all, the side, all the types of information which can be of interest to a, to a potential buyer. This is the space, the media space, uh, where you can uh, upload your media. So you see this whole dashboard is, is not that much different from, uh, from Facebook, except that, you know, unlike Facebook, we won't be selling or commoditizing your, your information in, uh, in any way. Uh, this is the whole privacy um, section. So this is where um, you, you can turn your profile from uh, private to public or public to private. And what I mean by this is that for, for some reason or another, you did not want to be featured anymore in, in one click. You can decide to you know, be removed from the platform or you can click um, to actually make your, your uh, profile up to date. Um, there is also a, a very nice feature on the platform, which are um, sustainability assessments. And what these enable you to do as a business is to see your potential readiness um, to become certified to a sustainability standard. So maybe a potential buyer may have uh, approached you, you know, and said, oh, listen, I would only, um, you know, uh, purchase your products if you comply to fair trade um, textile standard. What you can do with a platform is also a complete an online questionnaire, which is free again, uh, which in this case uh, has 193 questions uh, broken down on the environment, social, management, quality, ethics requirements, which are linked to the Fair Trade International Textile uh, Standard Certification. And based on the answers uh, which uh, you will be providing, so that questions which are going to be uh, shown to you, uh, also information from the Fair Trade International um, Textile Standard uh, requirements that say stipulates what needs to be done on specific uh, requirements. You know, you can answer yes, no, and at the end of the whole process, um, you can actually uh, create kind of a roadmap to assess a score, you know, an internal score. And this is not a competition, this is not a grade, but it's just something that enables you to say, okay, if indeed I wanted to become compliant to those potential um, standards, this is what I still need to do, or this is what I would need to work on. And this can also be really interesting it just to prepare you for potential audits, or even for you to, to see whether or not you want to go into um, sustainability certification. That is to say, if you were to reach 100%, you know, it doesn't mean that, yes, you are fair trade international textile standard. You would still have to go through, you know, the third party um, uh, verification process with auditors, you know, but at least this can be a a really good preparation because at times some people think that this is easy. We, we do know that it can be costly, you know, in terms of monetary terms, in terms of, uh, of time, but this can also enable you to see whether or not your potential business, you know, uh, would be uh, ready to actually engage in, in this. And, you know, navigating through your dashboard, your company where you edit the information you can also preview it at any moment in time. 
you know, based on the actual information which you have entered. So this was just a, a test, you know, I just dropped a, a pin, you know, in, in the middle of Africa. Um, but you can really spend some time, you know, to, to work on your um, actual profile and then be uh, visible on the sustainability map uh, network. So Tara, um, I think I'll, I'll stop here. Um, we'll have a, a good 20 minutes uh, for, for the Q and A's uh, from, from the audience. So um, I'm looking forward to, um, to any potential question on, on the platform, see whether there's also questions in terms of next steps and, uh, and engagement. I actually have a personal question um, that I'm, I'm seeing as people are talking about as well. Um, can you just actually go back when you were saying that countries now are requiring, so this is going to be basically the future. You, you have to have uh, being prepared to, to show this information, correct? Like you're seeing that it's more widespread since you've been doing this platform. Absolutely, Tara, absolutely. And believe it or not, now it's even brands that are pushing us, you know, because uh, not to name specific brands, but that even court cases, lawsuits, you know, which are happening in specific European countries uh, because some brands are not being transparent enough about their supply network. So this will become more and more uh, the norm. And when we talk about transparency, it's, it's, it's a big name, you know, and transparency and traceability. And these are, are terms that are at times, you know, um, used, um, uh, in, in, in different, different ways, but you know, right now governments are asking about transparency of products, which means, okay, so I've made this shirt, you know, where does it originate from? That's kind of transparency. Now, mm -hmm. there's transparency at different levels of the chain. And we talk about tiers. So they can be the first tier. So that's really the kind of, you know, Lacoste. Then there's um, oh, tier zero, and then there's tier one, which is the next intermediary in the chain. Tier two, the next intermediary. Tier three, the next intermediary, which can go down to tier 10, you know, when we look at textile and garment. And now there is a pressing need to go as deep as possible in um, supply chains. And there is a lot of talk about blockchains being, you know, the savior of all, and, you know, being in, in situations where you can, you know, find the remedy or the cure uh, to, to products uh, transparency and traceability in global supply chain, but that's not necessarily true. You know, it, it involves everyone in the supply chain to actually, you know, do their part. And now we're seeing uh, brands that are working extremely hard uh, to even just go down to their tier five. So I think that, um, if some of the uh, she trades accelerator program, you know, already feature on the map, are willing to be transparent and can already make the potential link, you know, to international buyers that much easier, I think it would be a, a very nice um, selling point. And I know you were. Um, sorry, I was actually reading someone's question at the same time speaking. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> I think everyone knows my brain's fried. No, I'm teasing. I'm, I'm really passionate about this topic. So, basically, you were saying now, if you're not if you're not certified, you can list this information. Where again can they list this information on the um, on the map? Where would they put? You know, like, what are what is the best advice you would have for someone? They're they want to be part of this platform. They're doing everything sustainable. They're using you know, let's say. Um, tea dyes, their, you know, their, uh, their products are not using fertilizer. Um, you know, where should they do this to, to make it so the buyer understands that they are sustainable, but they just don't have the certification? Absolutely. So this is a very good point, Tara. And I think that the description is actually what you see first, you know, uh, as part of, a, as part of a, a profile, you know? So if you click on any potential uh, company, you know, and you see its, uh, its profile, such as um, this one, the description is what you see on top of the screen. So this is really the area where I recommend um, some of our beneficiaries to pitch their sustainability, you know, to give a few lines about the business, but really say what is it that makes the business so special and so sustainable. 
at the same time, you know, as part of um, the uh, media, there's a whole section that deals with the company sustainability, where they can actually document, you know, what it is that they are doing that makes them sustainable. So you don't necessarily need to have a certification, you know, to be special, but um, you can pitch your story. And I was, it's, it's interesting because um, last Thursday, I was discussing with, um, I, I don't think I can say the name of one of the leading uh, insurance company in the world um, that was looking to source um, sustainable coffee, okay? And they were a little bit confused about all of these standards. And they said, listen, what I like about your map is that I can potentially also build a connection with um, a supply on the ground, you know, skip all the intermediaries and really learn about them, support them through time and build that specific connection with them, you know, and ultimately try to promote the sustainability. And if I, if I do believe in them, in them you know, if I, if, I, if I see it on the map, you know, and it was interesting for me to see that at times, you know, some companies do not also only look at certification. They also are interested in businesses that may not have the means to be certified, but already have uh, a very good story uh, behind the company and the business. That's a, that's a really good point. And then we just had a question here. Um, so, to read. Uh, so basically this person produces garments from sustainable fabrics and their, their suppliers are certified, but they're not. Does that, does their certification, does a supplier certification cover me? It depends. That's good and that's a tricky question. Um, it depends very much on the certificates. Um, because there are specific um, certificates that operate in different parts of the supply chain, right? Um, and, and maybe what I, what I can do, um, Tara, is, since we're talking, you know, about um, certificates, is also um, very briefly uh, point out the other platform, which is the ITC standards map, where if some of um, your beneficiaries, you know, are interested in um, specific uh, certificates, you know, which may uh, cover specific sectors such as textiles, you know, we do have this platform that has over 300 standards where they can review, you know, uh, some of the leading uh, textile initiatives, you know, which exist out there and actually understand what they're all about. Mm -hmm. So if we were to look at standard um, by Ocotex, you know, standard 100, um, there are some briefs that provide an overview about what these standards are all about, where you can become certified. And what I wanted to get to was actually the value chain focus. So some standards only focus on the production. Some standards, focus on a larger part of supply chain, which means that different actors in the supply chain would also need to be certified in order for the end product to hold the label, right? Mm -hmm. But there are standards that only focus on the production, for instance, organic cotton, in which case, you know, once the, uh, you get to the, to the uh, processing stages of, of the cotton, you know, um, this is something that you really have to ensure that you keep that organic trace throughout the supply chain. So it depends very much on the type of standards that you're looking at. But I just want to mention that there is also this other platform, not sustainability map, but standards map, which is kind of a brother sister uh, platforms, you know, and you can see on, on the page a link to go to sustainability map where some of your um, beneficiaries can find out a little more about uh, those standards and also questions which they may have, you know, relating to uh, uh, standards of their suppliers in terms of the requirements, et cetera, et cetera. I, I know this is not the, the topic of this conversation, but no, this as, as a few questions seem to, mm -hmm. to revolve around mm -hmm. um, sustainability standards, I, I think it's, it's worth uh, mentioning to review, you know, 
what are the different uh, type of requirements which need to be implemented, how quickly you need to Im implement those, how you comply, whether it's third party, how often you have to verify a claim, what's the governance of the standard. It's, it's, it's a very interesting platform that I, I really encourage some of our beneficiaries to go and check out. And we launched the new version last, uh, last Monday. So it's, it's very fresh and updated. Um, any other questions coming from your end, um, Tara? Sorry, I was muted. You would think no worries. <laughs> um, no, that is an amazing platform. And, you know, we're going to be getting, basically this is the kickoff, right, for the project. And this is amazing that now everyone is seeing these are the things that we need to learn. And, you know, majority of us are doing these items, but now it's how do we articulate them? What are the next steps as we grow? We may not be able to afford this certification at the moment, yeah. but now we can really look at and have a guideline of what we need to achieve. We have a lot of people in our program that are upcycling. And this is always kind of a tricky question. So, you know, we're using things, the items themselves may not be considered sustainable, but we're saving them from going to a landfill. It's a tricky question, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that is something that we've all kind of struggled about. How do we report that? So we have like, for instance, um, we work with people that uh, go to the landfill, they take things out of the landfill and then they repurpose them into furniture mm -hmm. or they repurpose them into jewelry. Um, but those items may, you know, could have been a bit harmful for the environment. Uh, they're, they're not sustainable, but they're being repurposed. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It, it does, Tara. And, you know, as, as you mentioned, we're, we're kind of at the beginning of this program. And I think um, our, our team here at ITC would be really interested to see, you know, how we could give um, such initiatives more visibility, you know, and, and maybe um, I don't have the answer right now, mm -hmm. but I have ideas, you know. Uh, we could actually create uh, pages, you know, project pages on the sustainability map to, to showcase some of these efforts, you know, uh, about circularity, you know, and, and market them to some of the buyers that come and visit the platform who would also be very interested in marketing them to their consumers, you know. So um, I might not tell you exactly how we can do it now, but I'd be more than interested to come up with a solution in the next few weeks or months, you know, and proposals to see how we could uh, involve um, some of our beneficiaries in this. You know, and Yassine and Elizabeth, you keep asking amazing questions about this topic. And, I, and I'm really grateful that you keep posting about it because it is very interesting. Like we were, um, the last project that we worked on, you know, we had people having container load orders of products that they did um, from, you know, upcycle, a, a woman named Matilda from uh, uh, Ghana, I just blanked on her, oh, um, upcycle, extreme upcycle. She did phenomenal and, and she um, is quite, um, what is the word, forthcoming with her success of uh, upcycling and buyers that she has reached. So it is a huge growing category. So I appreciate, you know, Elizabeth and I've seen all the comments you've been making and, and keeping that in the conversation has been really great. Um, a lot of comments, just so you're aware, on um, just the cost of this and how does that work. So thank you for showing that, that, that map that was, or the different applications and, and how do you actually do that. Would you have, you know, to close, you've been watching and you're in this space and you're really dealing with, you know, the top international brands. Mm. Um, no pressure, but what would you say to businesses right now that are trying to enter the space? They are sustainable. What is the number one thing they should do if they can't afford the certification? Sorry, that was a kind of a... No, that's, that, no, Tara, I think it's a great question. I think it's a great question. And I think, you know, if you cannot afford certification, it doesn't mean that you're not sustainable, you know? Um, I mean, I, I, I recall doing a, a training workshop in Ethiopia, you know, and talking about uh, tea, you know, organic tea and organic certification. And this elderly person in the room stood up and say, listen, I'm, I'm sorry, gentlemen, you know, I've been doing organic production for the last 25 years, you know, because I cannot afford fertilizers or pesticides, you know? So I am organic de facto. Why do I need a label? Why do I need a certification? 
And I think that right now with uh, the technology that we have at hand, social media or platforms such as sustainability map, this is a way in which we can communicate the sustainability efforts that you are doing without necessarily complying to standard A, B or C. And you know, as part of the sustainability map, as part of the She Trades Accelerator program, I really think we can give uh, more visibility to companies such as yourself, which are sustainable mm -hmm. uh, in one way or another, you know, just by doing specific pages, partners, blogs, stories, you know, that actually tell the story behind your products, you know. So I think that keep on being sustainable. That's the most important, you know, but do not get stopped simply because you cannot afford these um, certifications and things change. You know, we do see businesses, companies that start losing faith, you know, do not see necessarily the benefits in, in certification. This is not my personal opinion. I'm just recollecting, you know, what I've heard from different interactions I've had with buyers of this, you know, uh, world leading insurance company that just didn't want to go off and buy coffee certified A, B, or C. They wanted to make the connection with, uh, a company that was truly committed to sustainability. So I think that there are definitely means that we can leverage and we'd be more than happy to support all of our beneficiaries in, in this venture. I cannot thank you enough because those of you that met Wendy yesterday, Wendy and I um, have worked together for a good while, as you heard, and we were really in search. It's been now, I think almost two years trying to find a platform and here, this was sitting here. <laughs> on a golden platter and you know we're, we're really just so excited that we were able to connect and, and partner for this and you know I really suggest to everyone those of you that are not in the accelerator program she trades global I put the link in the chat I'll do it again and those of you in the accelerator program it's a check box you tick it and it really will be part of how we're going to be communicating going forward I think you've now heard over and over and over and Greg just said it as well, your blogging, your storytelling, everything you're doing, we've all been saying the same thing, has to have that one message. And this is one addition of your omni-channel strategy of messaging um, your trans uh, transparency. It's a wonderful platform. You know, we as um, a team are constantly looking at how can we show and highlight your wonderful supply chains that you have the transparency we're always been trying to, to do that and this is a great platform now that we can easily when we're communicating with buyers say also please look at their profile and you have a good snapshot of what they believe in as a company what their sustainable practices are and it's backed by itc so definitely um do this and again i want to thank you greg for your time today this was amazing i i, I cannot tell you those tools are great we'll put that all that in the chat again for everyone and again, thank you for this wonderful tool. It's really life-changing for everyone. Thanks, thanks a lot, Tara. And just to say, this is also the beginning of our journey. We'll be improving the tool over the next uh, few months, you know, so also based on the feedback we get, you know, from those actors taking part in the She Trades Accelerator program, we can, you know, throw in a blog feature, we can throw in loads of, you know, tax savvy solutions to really uh, boost their, their business opportunities. Thank you so much. And thanks for giving us uh, this opportunity. Wonderful. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye to all. Bye-bye. Wonderful. And we, I'm so excited now also as well to introduce our next speakers. I'm really excited to have Selena and Nizareen. Are you both there? Can you hear me? Hello, Hello Tara. Yes, yes, we're here. Hello. I Hello, am Tara. Hello, Selena. 